happen. These tables and chairs were donated. This was only supposed to last a year. Let's take a look right behind me. The roads here. You can hardly even see the lines. You can actually see this car is passing through here right now and going pretty slow. Residents were expecting construction to be finished here in mid October, but it's November. And if you take a look behind me, you can see construction is still going on here. The scene just cleared up just a few moments ago, but police are still working to locate a victim. This started off as a distress call from someone in a home on this block. And when they arrived on scene, there was a woman found dead within the home submerged underwater at this point. It's grown significantly since I first got here just hours ago. Made of appearance at all. You want to say anything to the victim? This is the worst part of it right here. This chair, you can see this piece of it was actually thrown out in front of the store. They had to bring most of the furniture out back. Masking up has been a divisive issue all across Michiana since the start of this school year. The demand for gas has gone up here at the pump within the last week, but experts say we should not expect to panic here in Michiana. Paper tickets are now a thing of the past. This season, all you'll need is one of these. Good morning, I'm Samantha Johns. Thanks for joining us this Sunday morning. We'll get to all those stories in just a bit, but first, your forecast. And new this morning, a travel boom. Memorial Day weekend is here, and the roads are expected to be busier than usual. Our ABC 57's Myra Franco gives you some tips if you're heading out the door this morning. Good morning, Myra. 2022 began very similarly to where we left off in 2021, asserting web slinging soaring above the competition. David Daniel has estimates for the weekend top five. All right, Dave, thank you so much. Stay safe out there. And our weather coverage continues with Levon Whitaker here in South Bend. Levon, what's it looking like on the ground from where you stand and what should people be aware of? And yesterday marks a full week of protests in Minnesota following the shooting death of Dante Wright at the hands of police. If you're a racing fan, Indianapolis is the place to be during the month of May. And with the Indy 500 taking place today, we just had to check out all of the fun the Speedway has to offer both on and off the track. A U.S. government agency is urging Peloton's Tread Plus customers with small children and pets to stop using the machine immediately. I'm a Florida girl at heart, so I'm a little bit nervous to head out on the road tonight. Do you have any tips for me? Yes, absolutely. It's shocking. It's scary. It just, it just goes to show you just never know. You got to be very careful. Christy Scheiber lives a few blocks away from the wooded area. Police say they found the body of 11 month old Mercedes Lane. She moved to the area almost three years ago, but couldn't believe what she found this morning after dropping her granddaughter off at school. On the corner of my eye, I seen something in the trees, so I went to look and it was the baby's diaper bag. Found a piece of paper with the mom's name on it, so I uh, immediately obviously called the police and they had me come down with them to show them where it was at. The diaper bag was located not far from a roadside memorial made in Mercedes's honor at the intersection of 1025 East and 50 North outside Knox. Marshall County resident David Jeffries has known all three suspects arrested in connection with Mercedes's death for approximately 15 years. He says Mercedes's babysitter Justin Miller was heavily involved with drugs in the past which is why he chose to separate himself. You know, any man that can sit there and abuse a child and do what he just did right here, that ain't no man. And he should never be, be a parent or a guardian to any child. Jeffrey says like many, he was hoping to hear news of Mercedes's safe return, but now he and other community members are just hoping this becomes a lesson for parents to be careful who they send their kids with. Unfortunately, people let drugs get the best of them. And when you let drugs sit there get the best of you, man, you do stupid things. You know, Mercedes, she didn't deserve this. She didn't deserve it at all. It's another difficult day for the residents of Benton Harbor. Waiting in long lines at water distribution sites was made even more frustrating by today's cold and windy weather. After almost 24 hours without running water, crews repaired the water line break. But it doesn't mean much because the lead in the water restricts them from using it for almost anything. Some living in Benton Harbor tell me enough is enough, and they're hoping the recall effort against Mayor Marcus Muhammad moves forward. I don't feel that what he said was accurate or um, appropriate as far as saying that Flint's crisis was a criminal and ours was financial. At this point, if you can't get the job done and get it done properly, yeah, you need to go. And we need somebody to get in here that really cares about the community. When it's time to vote, everybody be knocking on yeah, doors. You can. can't get rid of people knocking on your door. But now we in a pandemic, and we ain't got water. no water, and we in a water crisis, and you ain't got nobody knocking on the doors going from house to house. The Sewell family, a household of five, has been struggling to keep it together during this time. 
While they're frustrated with what they call a lack of action from the mayor so far, they say the crisis doesn't completely fall on his shoulders. This problem should have been fixed a long time ago. I'm not going to say it's Muhammad's fault because he wasn't a mayor back when it should have been done. For others like lifelong resident Jamie Crum, she's trying to remain positive for her kids. <laughs> but she says the lack of city leadership has gone on for far too long. I've been looking very hard and trying to find somewhere else to go. I have been in Michigan, been in Benton Harbor all of my life, and at this point, I'm tired. I'm ready to go. I was a, you know, I'm an alcoholic. One year ago from the day, I never thought that I would be in this position and nothing was certain. Devin Agee is an Iraq veteran who has struggled with PTSD. Seeking a lifestyle change earlier this year, he became involved with local nonprofit Get Wet for a Vet. For him, the support has been life changing, especially after learning he was one of five people chosen for this year's $500 Walmart holiday shopping spree. The emotion is always high. You know, it's so rewarding. Um, you know, not only just to see the things for the veterans and to give back because they gave so much, but just to still see the good in the world. For Natasha McLanahan, she's been involved with the annual give back event for over 10 years. The event, which is a partnership between the VA and Get Wet for a Vet, is just one of many for the year. But COVID concerns caused all but one vet to be able to shop in person. In search of volunteers, Vice President for the nonprofit Elaine Ledim decided to recruit her five-year-old grandson Jasper so she could teach him the importance of giving back to those who serve. <laughs> Yay! Thank you. He does lots of hands-on stuff, so I just want him to know you know, what a veteran is and how important they are. And so it carries on with the next generation. Although he's only five helping fill up the carts, he learned something pretty special. <laughs> which is something a G says he hopes to carry on to his daughter, who he'll be seeing for the first time this holiday season in over a year. I've just hit my nine month uh, sobriety marker. And just everything seems to be coming together. New place, an independent, you know, self-sufficient life. So I think this year, this year uh, I'll remember for a long time.